Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Peter Xu from Red Hat Virtualization Team. Uh, so today, my session is going to be about uh, KVM 30 reinterface, which is a new interface for KVM 30 tracking. So I'll start with some background information on migration and uh, dirty tracking, on, and especially on the existing KVM get dirty log and what we have done to improve it. Uh, then we will try to, I'll try to introduce KVM 30 ring and how it was implemented. At last, I'll share with, uh, with you some conclusions and uh, future work that we might be able to do. So this, uh, this, work, uh, this is a workflow of the general VM life migration. Uh, as we know that uh, each, mi each mi migration will contain quite a few iterations. The first iteration will be very special that we will migrate all the guest pages because on the destination node, there is nothing yet. Mm, starting from the second iteration, uh, we will need to synchronize dirty tracking formation because uh, since the migration is live, the guest is running uh, concurrently when we migrate in the first round. So there will be some new dirty pages. Uh, we need to update these pages to latest on the de destination node so that we um, it will always contain the latest information. Uh, the synchronization of dirty track information is done previously by an octo called KVM gap dirty log. This octo majorly copies a dirty bitmap from the kernel to user space. For each of the bit, it represents a guest page, uh, tells us whether that page is dirty in previous iteration. So uh, KVM dirty logging is not really ideal. It was uh, very, it was very good initially uh, when the VM is small, but uh, uh, since the VM gets bigger, the octo can get slower. Uh, if we look uh, slightly deep into the octo, it majorly does two things. Firstly, it copy a dirty bitmap from the user from the kernel to user space. The dirty bitmap size is linear to guest memory size. So for a huge memory, this copy procedure can take some time. And there is also another step called step two, which is to reset page protections. For example, uh, if we use write protection uh, to track uh, guest writes, then it means you need to re rewrite protect all the guest pages. So, uh, this process can take a long time and what's worse is that step two will scan the whole bitmap with MMU log held, trying to reprotect all those pages. The thing is, uh, MMU log uh, is very expensive. It uh, plays a similar role to MM semaphore uh, in a li general Linux process because whatever we do, like a normal page fold, uh, may take this log to resolve the page fold. So if a KVM get dirty log thread uh, took this log for a long time, it means all the rest of the vCPU thread can hang for a long time trying to take this log. And uh, after some measurement, we can see that uh, on some big systems with a huge memory, uh, this uh, step can take a few seconds or more. It means the vCPU can hang uh, without responding to uh, user interactions. And the, and the workload can stop. That is not good. So, uh, so uh, the community tried to improve this condition by introducing more capabilities uh, into KVM dirty logging. I called it uh, a few uh, variances. The first variance is a new capability called KVM cap manual dirty log protect. Uh, this capability uh, tries to solve two things. Firstly, it separates the steps. Uh, as we know, we have two steps in KVM get dirty log. With this new capability, we are able to separate these two steps 
into two octals. So the KVM get dirty lock will only collect 30 bitmap, but we will keep the pages writable. And uh, uh, we introduce a new octal called KVM clear dirty lock. And this octal will be responsible for reset page protections. Uh, what's better is that uh, we, since this is a new interface, we can try to uh, let it uh, take an extra range parameter so that we don't need to reset the page protection for the whole KVM slot. Uh, we can we can reset it in a finer with a finer granularity so that we only reset a subset of guest pages in the slot. Uh, this new capability greatly improved the VM responsiveness and uh, uh, and is um, it's uh, vastly used, I believe, uh, in uh, in some in major new kernels. However, uh, even with the variance one, uh, we later on noticed uh, a fact that even the enabling of KVM dirty logging is slow too. Uh, it's because uh, when we try to apply the KVM mem log dirty pages onto the memory slot, that's basically how we enable the dirty logging. This step requires an initial reset of page protections on all guest RAMs. For example, all the RAMs were writable. And when we start dirty logging, we need to write to protect all the pages. And that process can take a long time as well. Uh, so uh, to solve this problem, we introduced another new bit called KVM dirty logging initially set. Uh, this bit is very interesting because it sounds very simple, but it really solves some problem. Uh, the idea is very simple, which is uh, if this bit is set, we initialize all the 30 bitmap with once, which means uh, we assume all the pages were dirty initially. That's, uh, that's, that actually won't uh, affect major user space applications since for migration, uh, all the dirty bitmap will be set to one uh, anyways in the user space. So it won't affect uh, user space uh, on, my, on migrations. But for KVM, it is, a, it is a game because if all the dirty bitmap is set, it means we, we don't need to write protect it when we enable this feature. So we sp skip page protections in the first iteration, which is quite interesting. And after some measurement, uh, it was reported that migration starts even 10 times faster than previously uh, without this bit for a guest uh, with uh, 128 gigabyte memory. So we can see that what we have, we did uh, try to evolve a KVM get dirty log to make it better uh, and to be more suitable for huge VMs. But uh, we can see that 30 bitmap is uh, both the good and the evil. It's good is uh, in that uh, it is an ideal structure for many reasons. Firstly, it is very efficient because we used a single bit to represent a guest small page, which is ideal. And uh, probably the most efficient way to store this data structure if uh, we are going to cover the whole guest memory. And uh, it's uh, very easy to be serialized using atomic operations as well, because basically we are playing with the bits. Uh, however, uh, VMs are getting bigger, so as so are the dirty bitmaps, which means uh, like uh, collecting dirty bitmap will always be slower because we can't, we always need to collect it uh, per VM. So it will be always a huge work and a huge overhead. It, it will definitely take time. And sometimes uh, we need uh, to sync 30 bitmap somehow between source and destination. Like uh, for post copy, we need to discard 30 bitmap. And uh, for like uh, post copy recovery, we also need to synchronize this such information. So fundamentally, the 30 bitmap uh, structure is hard to scale. Uh, that's also uh, the reason that uh, 
maybe uh, we can try to change this uh, fundamental structure and think about something something else uh, which is friendly to huge virtual machines uh, here comes the kvm 30 ring uh, this work uh, was originated from Lei Cao uh, in 2017, or even earlier that I'm not aware of. And later on, uh, Polo took it over uh, and me. So I, I believe it was initially designed for Colo, uh, which is the, the so-called uh, high availability infrastructure for uh, QM and KVM. Um, the design is quite uh, straightforward, uh, but uh, we can see that it's totally different because uh, the 30-bit map is gone. We use the, instead of the bitmap, we use per VCPU rings to store 30 PFNs. Uh, PFN stands for page frame number or whatever we think, uh, Just it's just a page index. And the, uh, the most important thing is we use per VCPU rings this is funny because um, it means the data structure is uh, is not global anymore, and uh, also this ring can be configurable. It's not linear to guest memory size at all. Uh, it can be very small, like four K, maybe sixty four K. So the second thing is uh, we we uh, start from the beginning. We separate collection and page protection. So we separate the step one, step two. It can be done separately. And since we are going to introduce this new structure, uh, we make it uh, a shared data structure between the user space and the kernel uh, by using a map uh, to map the same page in the kernel and in the user space. So there is no extra copy when we fetch the information. The user space just needs to read the sum of the memory address to fetch this information. And it was uh, very uh, thread uh, friendly because we use uh, thread local buffers. So this is how uh, KVM30 ring looks like. As we have already mentioned, for each of the VCPU, there will be one 30 ring that bound to it. For each of the ring, there will be a multiple of uh, small page frame number entries that will, we can configure uh, when we start the virtual machine. Uh, we used uh, two extra bits in each of the PFN uh, to keep the status of this entry. So we'll talk about it later because uh, each of the, pa uh, uh, the page index can be either a 30, a 30 address or it can be something to be reset. There is a state machine uh, that we need to run Uh, about the state machine, uh, it is actually quite simple. So for each of the entry, it initializes with uh, empty state, which means it is free to use. So uh, when the kernel or when some VCPU tries to write uh, a page and we trapped it, we will try to insert a new 30 entry into the 30 ring of, uh, of this VCPU. Uh, this is done by KVM, of course. And uh, uh, we will mark this entry as 30 along with the page index. So after that, the user uh, will be able to see this newly dirtied page. So it can try to collect this 30 PFN. Uh, after that, set the status bit to collect it, uh, which tells the kernel that, OK, I finished using this address. You can try to recycle it. So the last step is done by the kernel again, which is try to read this PFN again. So we know that this PFN has been used and consumed. We reset this page that the PFN points to, and we clear the entry, go back, which go back to the empty state. So it's a quite simple state machine, but I drew the, this is how we generally uh, split the steps uh, of uh, step one and step two as we talked previously. 
Uh, this is a closer look, but uh, due to time reason, I don't uh, plan to dig into it. Uh, and uh, this is a comparison between the old dirty locking and the dirty ring. Uh, uh, anyone can feel free to reference this too. Uh, so I'll skip it as well. Uh, we can see that we have quite a lot of differences uh, between the two interfaces. So this is uh, some interesting part because uh, 30 ring is a totally, totally new structure and uh, it brings something new as well, mm, like uh, the full event. Because we know 30 ring, uh, 30 bitmap won't be able to get a full event because 30 bitmap was designed for whole guest memory. So it won't get full. Uh, 30 ring is different because it is a configured sized ring. So it can get full uh, as the vCPU continuously to 30 the page. Uh, and as long as we don't collect it fast enough, it can get full. And when it happens, uh, actually, uh, well, what we do right now is to interrupt the write instruction. Uh, so instead of continue this vCPU, we will do a VM exit and uh, actually a user space exit with reason KVM exit dirty ring full. This is a new, uh, newly introduced uh, exit reason so that the user space will know that, OK, this VCPU got its ring full and uh, it's dirty in the RAM quite a bit. We will try to rip the dirty ring to at least free some of the slots. Send a new IPTO called KVM reset dirty rings so that the kernel will recycle those 30 slots and continue the vCPU. And the vCPU will retry the previously interrupted instruction again. So this is um, mm, the, the whole process uh, should be like uh, quite natural, right? But uh, what's funny is that uh, we um, accidentally introduced such a way that we can synchronously handle 30 tracking, which leads to, leads to another uh, interesting fact about uh, side effect on auto converge maybe. Because this is not something we have with uh, KVM 30 logging. Uh, because uh, 30 logging cannot, it's always asynchronous. We cannot stop the, uh, the vCPU. But uh, with KVM 30 ring, we can which means um, unlike 30 logging, 30 ring tracking can block with PU and it will provide auto converge with like a final granularity of what to throttle. So auto converge was trying to throttle the whole system always. For example, we have a throttle uh, parameter uh, decides uh, uh, how many Mm, clock cycles this vCPU can use, but this parameter is applied to all the vCPUs. This brings a problem so that if, uh, you, let's assume there are two threads, one is a worker thread, one is a GUI thread, the user is using the GUI. And if the worker thread dirties the guest memory too often or too heavy, it will greatly, uh, that the uh, auto converge throttle will be uh, greatly increased, boosted, so the GUI will stall. This is not good. What we really want is we st we make this worker thread slower and we keep the GUI running, so the user can still be responsive. Um, so this is uh, something that we can probably improve in the future for auto converge with KVM 30 ring because we now have the ability to identify which vCPU is starting too fast. Also, we have better responsiveness as well on the so-called trap points because previously uh, when we do the auto converge logic, it is only done during 30 sync. But 30 sync is very rare. It only happens at uh, the start of each iteration, if you if we still remember the previous uh, workflow of live migration, but uh, KVM dirty ring provides us a way that we can trap the nearly every RAM write of the vCPU. Uh, 
uh, not really literally, but uh, because every write can trigger a rainfall. So it can be really responsive on um, uh, evaluating which vCPU is heavily dirty in the RAM. So with KVM dirty ring, a better auto converge can be really possible. Maybe we can have a version 2.0. Um, so that's uh, something we can probably consider later uh, because uh, it will be a work totally in the user space. Um, uh, some quick conclusions. So we know that we have quite a few benefits by introducing KVM Dirty Ring. And it, it can be something more than we have because, uh, like as I said, it was, uh, I believe it was in, in, initially introduced by Colo. But maybe we can find some new, uh, new scenarios that we can use Dirty Ring that we haven't imagined before. It definitely has reduced the memory footprint on the dirty tracking data structure. So the synchronization is cheaper as well because it can run in the background reading some memory just to read some memory rather than some heavy octos. And it is definitely much more friendly to huge VMs. So possible scenarios, scenarios uh, not, not only the major thing should be colo, but uh, there can be a lot of things that I already mentioned or even more. Uh, there can be some future works uh, about the KVM Dirty Ring. Firstly, I will, I will try to uh, move it forward on the review process and have it merged uh, because uh, it's still uh, an ongoing review. Uh, also, I would really like to, uh, probably after it's merged, because uh, um, so anyway, uh, probably we, uh, we can try with more real world runs with the Dirty Ring. So that uh, we can see what's still missing, what we can make it better. Um, so the the first thing I'm thinking about is whether it, we can support a non x86 because right now it only supports x86. Uh, but uh, we can think about other architectures. Um, also, we can have a per CPU ring reset. Currently, it was a kind of global. Uh, that's another story, but uh, definitely not uh, going to be covered in this talk. But uh, uh, we can just uh, think about something better, uh, probably after we have some real, more real-world runs to see what's the bottleneck. For QMU, there can be uh, quite a few things to do. Firstly, we can support the new interface uh, in kvmo.c. That's something I have already done uh, in my test branch. So after the kernel series, I'll try to move forward this one as well. So it's a tick. The, the next ones will be question mark because I, uh, it's just something I was thinking about. Uh, so if we know, uh, if we are familiar with QMU migration infrastructure, we will see that not only the KVM layer, there is a dirty bitmap. We have dirty bitmap in quite a few other layers as well, including the RAM block layer, including the migration layer. So uh, how about we remove all these dirty bitmaps? So it's a, it's a bigger work uh, comparing to the first one because the interface is easy. Uh, however, if we want to replace all the dirty bitmaps in the upper layers, we probably need to think more, at least mm -hmm. on how it affects uh, TC, uh, uh, TCG, uh, uh, not TCG, um, VGA and other users. Uh, we need to make sure they won't be affected. But I believe migration should be the major one. And also, we need to think about uh, something that we might have missed. And uh, with all these things removed, uh, maybe pre-copy can be able to read 30 pages in queues. Uh, so it will look more like post-copy. Uh, but uh, uh, as a side effect uh, of this, all the converge will be on by default, since rings can get full, right? As we have already mentioned, the 30 bitmaps won't get full, but the rings can. So all the converge will be a must uh, if we remove all the dirty bitmap and use queues, like ideally per VCPU queues uh, to, uh, to cache the dirty pages. So uh, it can really looks, look something like this. But uh, again, this is an imaginary world. Uh, so we can have other solutions. Basically, this is uh, something we, we may think about uh, 
that can be really friendly to huge VMs, uh, assuming it is coming. Like uh, more people will be using huge VMs, and this seems to be a one solution comparing to the other one, uh, which uses post copy and uh, uh, even some more enhancements there uh, to make post copy better and more suitable, more responsive uh, for huge VMs. And this one can be something as well that uh, we try to throttle the source vCPU 30 rate. But uh, at the meantime, the most important thing is, is to keep the host responsiveness uh, by uh, smart uh, logic on how to manipulate the dirty rings to control how vCPU runs. So we, if with a very nice control, maybe we can have uh, very good responsiveness uh, to control the vCPU, uh, but at the same time keeps the responsiveness. So uh, the last page is about uh, some further references. Uh, anyone can check the la latest version of KVM30 in here in the first link. And I also pasted the repos for testing, just in case anyone is interested uh, for both uh, kernel and QMU. Uh, so that's all. Thank you very much.